Let's see how to do the questions in our problem one through this example. Your first step is to read the question to understand what the experiment is. So here it says the spring constant of a spring K can also be found by hanging different masses M at the end of the spring and measuring the period of the oscillations T. The relationship is given by this equation. So here, what we want to find out eventually is the spring constant, K, which is independent of uh, what the hanging masses are. For the different hanging mass, the period of oscillation T will be different. So our raw data will be the mass M, and for each M, you're going to, you're going to measure a different period. So the raw data is M and T. The desired quantity is the spring constant, K. So we are going to find this K by a graph. However, if you plot the raw data directly, if you plot the period on the y-axis and the mass on the x-axis, you will end up with a curve like this curve. And this is because the period is proportional to the square root of m. It doesn't proportional to the m. So with the curve, we won't be able to get the slope, and we won't be able to calculate the spring constant k. So what the trick we are going to do is we are going to make force the graph to be linear by plotting on the y-axis t and on the axis, x-axis square root of m. This way, we will get a straight line because t is proportional to the square root of m. So our y will be t and our x will be square root of m. So how are we going to find k from the slope? They're not directly equal. So we should look back, look back at our, uh, the equation. So we plot t on the y-axis and we plot m, square root of m, on the x-axis. So what's left here is y over x, or the slope. So we can write down slope equals 2 pi over square root of k. And that we want to express k in terms of slope, so we can move square root of k to the other side. That would be 2 pi over slope. And if we square the equation, we would get k. So we can write here k is 2 pi over slope squared. We also need to know the uncertainty of the spring constant because in the conclusion we have to state k together with its uncertainty. To do that, we just need to apply the uncertainty propagation rules number two, right? So k is the uh, you know two pi multiplied two pi divided by slope divided by the, another slope. So what we have is we can use this delta k over k. We always do relative uncertainty is two delta 2 pi, which is a constant over 2 pi, plus 2, because there are two of them, delta slope, treat slope as a quantity over slope. And of course, delta 2 pi is 0. So finally, our equation will be delta k over k equals to 2 delta slope over slope. Once we know the slope and the uncertainty of the slope from the graph, we would be able to calculate delta k over k first, and then the absolute uncertainty delta k. There is one question left. That is, when we do the graph, we need to plot the data points, which we can find out by taking our raw data and the you know, square root, the mass to get t and the uh, square root of m. But we also need the uncertainty of this data point in order to plot the error bar. 
So we still need one more thing we need to find out is delta square root of m. We need this number to plot our error bars. There are two ways to find delta square root of m. One way is to use our rule number uh, 4 in our propagation, uh, uncertain propagation rules. If you want to use, if you use this one, because it's a power to the uh, a half, so delta square root of m over square root of m is a half delta m over m, but we want the absolute uncertainty. So delta square root of m is, well, it's relative uncertainty times square root of m. Um, you can stop here, but if you want to further simplify this equation, you can cancel square root of m uh, and end up with a half delta m over square root of m. Another way to find out delta square root of m is to use rule number 5, which is a rule that we uh, uh, rarely used before. If you use that, delta square root of m, that will equal to the derivative, which is delta, which is d, I'll write m a half over dm, that's the derivative, times delta m. If you look up rule number 5, that is the application of rule number 5. So take the derivative, derivative would be a half m minus a half, that's the derivative, times delta m. So if you write it, you can write it as 2, and the two, uh, two methods will give you the same result. And now we can write here, uncertainty for the graph data, because y is t, so delta y is simply delta t. They're equal, so they have, that's the same quantity, so they have the same uncertainty. But x is delta x, which is delta square root of m, that equals to a half delta m over square root of m. So that finished our example. So here is our worksheet. It works through these questions the same way as the example. In question two, you have to pay attention that this r squares is r square is in the denominator. Question three is in fact the same experiment as our example, except we have uh, rewrite the equation and ask you to make a different choices of x axis and y axis. This shows that, you know, as long as you make the uh, uh, relationship uh, linear, y is, and x are proportional, there are more than one choice. There are more than two choices of uh, what quantities you graph. Uh, you can get the slope. And of course, the uh, equation to go from the slope to the desired quantity will be different depending on your choice of uh, x and y. Question four is, um, used in the standing waves of the spring. Um, it, it's different, um, but you should apply the same principle, the same method as the, uh, the other questions. The only thing that's uh, different is uh, this relationship by itself is linear. So you can plot the raw data directly. The raw data, uh, n is called a harmonic number. Uh, it's a integer, so there is no uncertainty. You can write delta x equals zero. And uh, there is also another difference is uh, when you find the uncertainty of a desired quantity v, there are two uh, things in it. One is the uncertainty of the slope, and the, the other thing is the uncertainty of the uh, length of the string.